Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Yuri Kavilenov. I am running the company called Soft A Soft. Uh, the company is uh, pretty important because it, this is how our website is called, <coughs> where you can download our software. Uh, the company is very young, it's just one year about, and uh, uh, the history is that uh, we were working in the field of web interactives for many years, and um, at, uh, at some point uh, we were fired from the company we were employed before, and uh, our job was, I mean, our work was taken from us, but this inspired us to start a new project called uh, <laughs> called Verge 3D. Uh, and this is a toolkit for you, uh, for Blender artists, which allows you to create interactive web-based experiences. So we got like two keywords here, and I'd like to say a few words about them. And the first is online, and uh, it is very difficult to imagine the world without internet right now, because if it, if it were no internet, where there were no Captain Disillusion, for example, or there is no open source, because open source is sharing code uh, through remote channels, there were no Blender, and there were no Blender artists probably, we would just do something else, for example, writing poetry or maybe drinking vodka, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, this is so important that if a company, for example, is paying just little attention to its online presence, it can go bankrupt. This is a beautiful store, but it's closing. On the other hand, if a company pays enough attention to their online presence, they can be successful, and some of them can reach like trillion dollar value, such as Amazon. So uh, what about experience? And experience, by experience I imply a real-time imagery, so which is rendered uh, like 60 frames per second, at least 30 sec 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 frames per second. And uh, why it is important, because uh, while it is rendered, it can accept user input so that uh, if behavior change according to user input. Uh, and this have consequences, because when we just watch a 3D animation, and 3D animation is presented in form of a video, uh, we just play, hit play, and stay and watch, and this is very relaxing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, 3D Interactive is something that you constantly keep connected with, so, because you need to provide input and uh, receive feedback from this imagery. Uh, a more extreme case is uh, VR, AR, things that uh, basically mixes virtual reality and real world. And this is also uh, can be done only in real time because uh, imagery should react on a head movement, for example, or <coughs> controllers or so on. So, uh, these two fields of activity are especially powerful when they are combined together as a web interactive. So, you deliver interactive content through internet channels, and this becomes very powerful uh, combination. And from our experience, uh, customers which, you, which used uh, such tools like our tools, 
they usually create applications which fall into one of these big categories. And I'm talking about customizers and explainers. So a customizer can be usually seen in an online store. So here we get a real-time rendering of a 3D model. So we can view it at different angles, zoom in. And uh, what's most important is that products are usually come with uh, several options, such as size, uh, components, colors, fabrics, whatever. And uh, it, is, uh, it appears to be a very convenient way to present all these options in one place using a 3D configurator. In this 3D configurator, you, uh, the user, the customer, can select personal choices and finally make an order or a quotation. This approach is uh, becoming so important Nowadays, that an uh, entirely new class of software emerges called CPQ, Configure Price Quart. So this is basically a system that allows you to create a 3D configurator and which is integrated with an e-commerce system, right? So 3D imagery is a very important uh, part of such systems. Another big uh, class of software is explainer. So this is basically a web application which explains how things work. And here is a good example of this application. This is a spacecraft called InSight, which is currently approaching Mars. And it was created by visualizers from NASA using our software Verse 3D. So uh, you got something very complex, consisting of many parts, and each part is very expensive, actually. And uh, interactive 3D imagery becomes a very uh, interesting and uh, clear way to present such things. So uh, there is a manipulator, there is a, I mean, robotic arm, some instruments are present on this platform. These are animated to show how they work, and so on and so on. So you got here the camera output, which is actual camera output from the several cameras located on this platform. Besides, uh, besides these infographics, there are other uh, also, there are other uh, areas where this can be useful for training, for teaching. So this is uh, what we call explainers. OK, so uh, what is the right technology to do this, and what is the right tool to do this? And nowadays, the only right technology left uh, for creating interactive web-based Applications is called WebGL. WebGL ba basically becomes uh, basic, basically this is 3D in the browser, so real time 3D rendering in the browser, all of them, including mobile. And uh, you need also the right tool because you are working in Blender, and you want to bring your Blender scenes to WebGL. You want it to be Blender friendly. You want it to be artist friendly and uh, web friendly. And this is our engine, Verge 3D. So I just make a few uh, thoughts, I mean, insights uh, in uh, how it works. So we got here Industrial Robot. This is our demo. And uh, models and rigs, and animations, and cycles materials, everything 
is assembled in the single blend file, right? And everything can be immediately seen in the browser by clicking this sneak peek button. So you click it, and it automatically converts to WebGL content and shown in the browser. Another button launches another tool, which is called App Manager. And the App Manager basically allows you to maintain a list of projects and create new projects with a single click. And uh, another tool which is available via App Manager is called Puzzles. And puzzles you use to add interactivity to your scene. So you got a scene and you want it to make, to make it interactive so that it accepts some uh, input, user input, and reacts to it. And this is achieved by using this very intuitive tool, uh, which we call puzzles. On the left, you see uh, visual blocks that you drag from the toolbox to the workspace and connect with each other. So you got puzzles for events, for objects, for animations, for user interface, for whatever purpose, and they are stored in these categories on the very left. <coughs> Let's have one example. So we want the robot uh, weld maybe itself by clicking on the control element here, uh, this blue star object. And how do we do this? We just add a when click it puzzle and connect it with object selector called welding on. This is how this object is named in Blender. So finally, when the user clicks on this object, uh, it triggers some actions. So let's have some actions. And uh, the actions are the following. We want to show this Sparkles model, which is created like intersecting planes uh, to which a transparent texture is applied. We want to play sound to make it more realistic experience. And we want to play animation of this particle effect. So actually, this is not a particle. This is a texture atlas animation, which is applied to these intersecting planes. Finally, then the animation is played out. We want to just hide this object, which is no longer needed anymore. And every time the user clicks on the control element, it will play this animation with sound. And this is how uh, it is done in uh, Verse 3D and puzzles. Of course, you can use uh, programming code for that. So it is possible that you use programming code for creating this little scenario. And uh, actually, it is possible to use mixture of puzzles and programming code at the same time in the same application uh, if you don't have something in puzzle or you just have a uh, mixed team of programmers and artists. But uh, what we prefer ourselves is to use puzzles whenever possible. Mm, basically, all our demos in our Verse 3D distribution are made with puzzles. And even we, the developers, uh, just use puzzles in our everyday work because it is very easy to create a sample, like interactive sample, which we use for internal development. OK, so how do we create user interface? And uh, the specifics of a web application is that user interface is often is a website which is surrounds with 3D uh, area where it is rendered. And another specific is that user interface must be responsive. It must work on every device, on mobile device, on tablet, or on uh, different screen resolutions. 
and uh, high definition devices as well. So, and this is why we decided do not invent our own UI system. Instead, we use HTML. And you actually don't need to create HTML manually by writing some HTML CSS code. There are some tools which you can use for creating HTMLs in a visual way. Some of them commercial, uh, some of them free. Adobe UC is a nice tool, but it's discontinued, still available. So basically, you design uh, buttons, information windows, menus, other buttons, everything in visual way in some of these tools. Other are also available. And the 3D part is like embedded, it's like in YouTube. YouTube video is embedded on the website. website. The same way uh, the 3D part is embedded in this web page. Finally, you just use the, the same puzzles for connecting uh, user interface events with imagery so that the user clicks some button and something help happens on the 3D side. Uh, actually, the contrary, the contrary is also possible for example, if we zoom in to this device too much, uh, the user interface starts fading out so that mm, do not interrupt our viewing of the device itself. So this application is also can be seen in our gallery, in our demos. OK, so I got a major announcement that to make and this uh, relates to the upcoming version of Blender. Basically, we are going to support EV real-time render in the next release of version 3D. And uh, as such, you will be able to create interactive uh, applications, such as customizers or explainers, using EV materials. Uh, we got already some preliminary results, it exports, and it, it can be seen in the browser. And uh, we are just finishing our work to make it available for you. So basically, uh, well, I think I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll be around if you are interested or got some questions. And there, I mean, cafe or something. Thank you.